So the adult industry is not always fun and games. It doesn't always attract people with healthy boundaries. And you experienced a pretty crazy stalker experience that I you actually wrote an article about, right, mm-hmm. for XBiz. Yeah, and I think cam girls tend to be subject to more stalker experiences because the viewers feel a more personal connection with them just because of the nature of the job. Yes. So can you tell us about what happened to you? I think that especially with cam, like like you said, like there's always that more personal interaction. And for a lot of people who are especially like consistent webcam models, you're typically there every day. Mm-hmm. You, you may take a couple of days off here and there, but these are people who um, – they see you every day. They talk to you every day. Um, once you like can feel like you can build up a point where you can trust them, like sometimes you'll give them like a, they'll tip you for like your phone number or your Snapchat. And then there's just all the different social media. Like, so no matter, even if you're online or not, they always have access to you in mm-hmm. some way or another. It's, it's kind of, I've described it before as like having like hundreds of like different boyfriends <laughs> like but that you don't like oh God, just do anything with. Exhausting I know <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I think that that can breed this level of like dependency on their side whether you feel that way or not um because like for for us we show up and and it's a job and I have I have friends that I've made but there's there's always has there always has to be that separation. And that's what I have always made very clear. Like this is my job. Like we can be friends and friendly, but like it doesn't go further than that. I'm not here to to date anyone or to fuck anyone. I'm not gonna marry any of you. Like I don't reach into your wallet. I don't swipe your credit card. I don't make you do anything. You can make me do things with mm-hmm. your tips, but only what I'm comfortable with. Right. And I think, you're st- exactly. You're still setting boundaries. But that. I think that there's always that mentality, especially with the people who spend a lot of money and time mm-hmm. on the site. There's one thing for just spending time, but there's another when there's there's money involved, mm-hmm. especially to the level that this particular individual had with me. Um, if I if I just give her this that she wanted, if I just tip this, if I if I if I spend this amount, then, then maybe she'll change her mind. Maybe she'll want me. It, and they, they lose the point where they can hear what you're saying and they just put in what they want to hear mm-hmm. because they think, well, I have, I have this power over her because I've made her do this for this amount of money before I've made her do this. Like, and it becomes this level of like control. Mm-hmm. And once you recognize that as a cam model, like, oh, this person, like I have literally changed who I am as a performer to basically continue having that level of contribution, mm-hmm. I guess, because it's like it can get to a point where like you you don't reply to to a message or like a text or something or you you tell them off for something that made you uncomfortable. Then they'll start to like withhold um yeah. tokens and stuff like that, which considering it's your job, like that's that's what you rely on. Yeah. So it's it's hard to have that separation to be like I have to be my own person and I have to really set these boundaries and make sure that they understand. And at some point, if you've set those boundaries and they, they continue to cross them, you have to cut them off. Mm -hmm. But once they don't have that object of their obsession, Mm -hmm. I guess they lash out. So that's, that's what happened in this particular situation. Um, I had, uh, he bought my legal name, off of a cam girl that I had worked with back when I wasn't aware of the fact that you you really can't even trust the people that you work with, wow. you know? I hear a lot about this because, you know, one of my really good friends is Bailey Rain, who cams a lot, and, like, some of the backstabbing yeah. that ha- and the betrayal fr- by cam girls to other cam girls is, like, yeah, really it's, brutal. and it's ridiculous, and it's not something that I ever thought would happen. And like I like I mentioned, I was homeschooled, so I, I never really had, like, a lot of friends. And then especially going into a job that kind of alienates you from um, vanilla civilians, Mm -hmm. you know, like I had told friends in the past, like, oh, I'm a webcam girl. And they just like stopped talking to me. And Mm -hmm. it's like, you don't even know like what it is, but you chose to, you know, whatever. So I thought, well, I can make friends with people who are in my job because we all understand like members can be scary. We can understand that it's hard to like do all these things and um and I guess I was just far too trusting because I was young and naive and I had no idea. Um, he found one of the addresses that I lived at in California um, by doing image searches, I guess. And he found the original listing for the rental 
um, like on Zillow and like all this kind of stuff. And it was just really uncomfortable and weird. But did he show up there or did he, he didn't, like he didn't show up there? But no. he sent he let you but know that he knew where he, you lived. He let one of my other members know. Who ended up showing me like the messages and was like, he said he found it by accident. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. But he was also my big tipper. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really address it. And I was moving anyway. So I was just like, oh, well, you know, maybe it was an accident. And I just like let myself convince that. And I was like, every little thing that he did, whether it was like saying something degrading or um, he would say degrading things about the other girls that I worked with or be like, it got to the point where he used to be normal. And then it was like, I don't even want you doing girl, girl shows anymore. Like they're not attractive to me. And I I get jealous seeing you with other people and all this kind of stuff. And I started to let him kind of dictate what I did in my shows as well as my own life. And it was driving me like nuts. Like I had like a mental breakdown and I was finally like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like this isn't, I'm not comfortable. Like, you're doing these things purposefully to try to basically hurt me mm-hmm. and I'm not okay with it anymore. And, uh, um, he kind of just went off the wall and that was, uh, AVN 2018. And then, uh, AVN 2019, I had a roommate when I first moved down to Vegas and I can't, we kind of had a falling out, which makes me sad, but I can't think of any other way that the same stalker would have gotten that address of that rental. And I'm not saying that she did it. I'm really not. I'm not even going to say her name because I don't know. But I just, at the time, I couldn't think of any other way that he could have found that, you know? Right. And uh, uh, a Twitter account popped up during AVN um, with the picture of the avatar as the front of my rental um, was posting um, the exact address telling people that it, I had a, a rape fantasy and I wanted people to break into my house and have oh sex with God. me, that I'd be having like an orgy party and just like come by like at any time and all this crazy stuff. Oh my God. Yeah. So I actually flew one of my friends down from Washington to kind of like stay with me and like walk around the convention and stuff with me because I was terrified and I didn't know what to do. And I had contacted the cops uh, previously, but he's in a different state um, and they couldn't do anything without arresting him. And it was an anonymous account. And Twitter doesn't release records like that. So mm-hmm. there was really no way to effectively protect myself. They, the cops went to his house and they gave him a warning, but that's all that they could do. And, um, you know, it's it was one of the gripes that I also had with MFC at the time because I showed them the police reports. I showed them the accounts. Um, w- tr- things were traced back to his member account and they they wouldn't ban him. They were like, it's a he said, she said kind of thing because wow. you don't actually have physical proof. And I'm like... But look at all the messages that he sent. Look how that correlates to like what's being done. And yeah. they wouldn't do anything. And um, that was at the time that I, I wanted to take a break from camming. So when I reached out to you about, you know, doing twisties, I wasn't going to quit camming. And I I, I won't. But um, I needed to have that that mental break away from the of stress course. of the members. That makes a lot there, of sense. There were other members who were also um, just like mentally abusive things that I like didn't even realize were happening until I basically had that breakdown. Right. And I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, this is not even who I am anymore. Like I shouldn't be letting these people affect me just because they're paying me. Mm -hmm. Like it, it it shouldn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then like when Twisties offered me that contract, I was like, this is exactly what I need right now. Like I'll still be able to make money. I can still cam casually and not have to have as big of a focus on there because there was always this drama coming through like in the chat rooms, like about like, oh, you're like a whore. I would get messages telling me I should like kill myself and all this crazy shit. And I mean, I just, I couldn't deal with it. So yeah. camming is very isolating. So especially when you don't really feel that you can trust anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, you spend all that time like in front of a computer screen, like in your bedroom day in, day out, even shooting content like from home. Like there was not much social interaction whatsoever. Um, So getting into uh, professionally shooting instead of just shooting at my house was so much better for me because I I met so many people who – basically have become really close friends of mine. One of my best friends in the industry is Marco Cervera. Uh, We do a lot of work together. Um, I'm actually living with him right now, which is convenient because we can just shoot all the time. And, you know, if I, if I do get down or whatever, he's like, like, just get your ass in front of the camera, like make yourself feel pretty. I'll make you look pretty. You'll feel better. Like let's freaking do this, you know? And, um, he actually worked with me on my first, uh, big feature film as well. So, um, but I've just met so many 
um, great producers and talent that have just become really close. And now I actually have people that I can talk to mm-hmm. and that I can hang out with and that there's more than just me and a computer. Yeah. And I don't have to worry that, oh, this person said this about me online and like, oh, and and this and this and this and just be worried about what these faceless people are saying about me. Because yeah. even if I get like upset, like I have people that I can talk to about it. Right. Instead of just like letting they it can feed into my own insecurities. Yeah. And, and like, they can bring you back into the real world. And yeah. be Like these people yeah, are not, not real. They're not real.